Okay, one of the skills that you're going to have to do in a lot of your homework problems and also in your next project is that you're going to need to take data that's either that you've been given or that you went out and got, and you're going to have to take that data and turn it into a graph of some sort. Um, you can do this by hand, um, but to be honest, um, a lot of times our, our computer technology is a lot better um, to make things nice, neat, and pretty. Um, and can do it fairly simply. Um, if you're familiar with Excel or some of the um, chart options within Microsoft Word, you're welcome to use those um, as part of this class. Um, however, if you're not very familiar with them, there are a lot of really nice, even easier to use um, options out there available. Um, what I have here is a link that I often use when I'm making graphs to put into your guys' assignments and tests. Um, and that's this website here. It says Kids Zone, but hey, if it's easy and it works, why not use it? Um, this website is actually this NCES is the National Center for um, Education Statistics, which you know seems like a good group to sponsor what we're trying to do here, which is um, some statistics in action, turning this data actually into a graph. All right, so when you go to the website, and I've got the link posted in Angel for you, so you can get go straight there. Um, this is the screen that comes up. At this point, what you want to do is choose the graph that you would like to actually use. So what we're going to do is an example here. Um, I'm going to show you how to create both a bar graph and a pie chart using this program. Um, and the data that I'm going to use is this over here, just some made up stuff. Um, in this case, we're looking at students' favorite colors. Five students said they liked red, nine blue, two green, one pink, two black, three yellow. So that, that's the data set that we're going to use. Let's start by making a bar graph. So to do that, I'm going to click on the bar option. And this is what's going to come up. Um, as we look down the side here, there's different tabs. And we'll, we'll go through each of those tabs as we go through our process here. Um, in this particular case, I'm looking at the bar graph. You have options about which ways you want them to, your bars to look. If you want some kind of funky shapes, it'll do a lot of stuff. You can play around with colors, um, lines, and where you, if you have a, a legend or a key of some sort for your graph, you can change where it goes, or you can take it out altogether. All that stuff's going to go on this screen. We're doing a pretty simple bar graph. I'm just going to go ahead and leave all the defaults so you can see what you want to do. Let's go down and click on data. This is where you're going to put stuff in. I, when I'm checking your graphs on homework and on tests and all of those exciting different things, the things that I'm looking for, I'm looking for you to give it a title. I'm looking for you to label your axes. Um, and I'm looking for the data sets that we're doing. Um, what I'd like to, so for this title, I'll just call this class's favorite colors. Um, I picked the bars that were vertical, so the x-axis along the bottom is going to be what their favorite colors are. And the axis up the side is how tall those bars are going to be. And that is going to be the number of students that had that favorite color. Um, source is just if you got your data from a website or something like that. Um, we always like to save ourselves from copyright problems. Now, in this case, I have one, two, three, four, five, six different colors. So I'm going to choose six here. Um, I just have one group of data. Um, if, we, if you ever need to do a comparative group where you want to have two different sets of data side by side, this is where you can change that. My group label, just the one group, is just the students in the class. And now I just go through. I'm going to give each different item label. So in this case, I'm looking at red. And then the value associated with it, there were five students that had red. Blue, nine students. Green, two students. Pink, one student. Black, oops, two students. And yellow was three students. Um, max and min values are just if you have things that are really, really big or small and, and the spacing looks weird, you can adjust that right here. Um, let's click here on labels. Um, if you want to show the labels, usually showing labels is a good idea. You can kind of change types, font sizes, and all sorts of different things to make it look pretty. Let, well, let's just see what it looks like now, and then we'll see if there's anything that we want to change. Um, we just click on the preview tab. Here's a graph. Notice that we have a title up at the top, class's favorite colors. The labels on the bottom say favorite colors. We have all of the colors labeled here. Our heights are coming up in nice, even things, and it says the number of students. To be honest, I'm pretty darn happy with this graph. And so um, I can't really think of anything that I'd, I'd particularly like to change at this point. So at that point, we can decide what do we want to do. Um, if you just want to print it out, 
Um, or you may want, you can just hit the print button, it'll print out, you can attach it in with your homework. Um, and I'd suggest that you do that rather than trying to hand sketch. I think it'll be a, a, a lot faster and I'd like you to get familiar with a little bit of the technology because it makes your life a little bit easier. If you actually want to import your graph into another document, and this is what I do when I make tests and stuff like that, or if if you're working on your project, for example, and you'd like the graph to appear as part of your paper, you can click on this download button here. Um, over here on the download, if you want to actually import the graph into something else, oh, where's my little Dropbox here? Let's, there we go. Um, generally, what I found works the best is you either want to export it or download it as a JPEG or an EMF. Let's go ahead and do a JPEG. Um, I'm going to click on download. And it's going to try to open this in your in another program. In my case, it, it's just opening it in Windows Photo Viewer. You'll have something that will download this. And at this point, once you get something that shows up with your graph, it's now in JPEG format. If I right click on it, I can just click on Copy. And then I can come over to my document here, right click here, and say Paste. And poof, there's my graph that we just created. So it's a nice. They actually have, have made it fairly nice for going back and forth um, and being able to put your graphs in some other format or print them out, um, depending on what you need to do. Now, I'm going to go ahead and close these tools right now. Um, and let's go back and see what the settings look like if we want to make a pie chart. Um, really, for your homework assignments, you're either going to be using bar graphs or pie charts to do everything. So let's click on pie chart. It says it might erase the data. I think usually it does a pretty good job of keeping it if you're just switching from one form to another. So let's take a look at what's happening here. Shading, you get to do some pretty stuff here. Background color, you can do crazy stuff here. You can make all sorts of 2D, 3D graphs and legends. We'll leave all the defaults here for just a second. Clicking on the data, it did keep all of my data here. So we've got that. Um, labels, well, let's just see what it looks like just by switching over. All right, so here I've got a chart. It's got my title, class's favorite colors. I've got a legend here, red, blue, green, pink. So here's all my different colors. And then what we have around the outside is the number of each thing. A lot of pie charts that you've seen may have some other settings. First of all, one thing that's driving me crazy is the fact that red is green. So we can change all of that. If you look here at the data tab again, notice that we can change the color of each of the pieces. If I'm doing something on colors, I can pick red for this one, blue, and I'm just clicking on the box and picking something that's the color that goes along with it. This was green, something pinkish, something blackish, something yellowish, and we can change all of those. Um, if you click on preview, at least my colors look a little bit more of what I'm expecting. Um, other things that you can change, you can change the labels. For example, right now it's showing the value, like five students, nine students, two students. Maybe you want it to actually write what the color is there. Um, if we click on, right now it says position out, we can click it inside. Now let's see how my graph changes. All right, so I've got my colors. The labels are all written inside now, which works pretty well for everything except for the black one. So maybe you want to use gray instead of black or something like that. And you can do that. You can write the labels in there, um, which are the label names. You can add the percentage of the total um, as well as the label, which is kind of a neat thing to do and something that you've seen on a lot of your other graphs as well. Um, oh, they wrote them right on top of each other, so maybe that wasn't my best option. Um, anyway, just play around with your settings here. Um, see what works, what you like, what you don't like. Um, and once you're happy with it, then you can go ahead and print it out. Um, in this case, if you have things well labeled inside here, Remember, if you go back to the um, design screen, you can go on No Legend, and then it won't show up. So it just depends on how you actually like to um, like to do things. So play around with it. There's all sorts of fun stuff. And again, once you're done and happy with it, you can print it, um, or you can save it as some other file type and import it into another document that you'd like to use. So some great, super options. Um, what else did I want to say? Um, on the main design page, if you want to get some help, th there's a Create a Graph tutorial. It'll walk you through a lot of different options. And another thing this, that this tutorial does pretty well that will supplement the other learning that you've done in um, between the textbook and some of the things that I've written up, um, this will also talk a little bit more about deciding how do you decide which 
graph type to use for different data pieces and stuff like that. So lots of interesting stuff, fairly easy to use. Click back and forth between whatever you need here. Um, just play around with it, have some fun, um, and use this as a super tool to help you out with your homework as you're going through and doing stuff. Um, okay.